missed uh, last week. Uh, you wouldn't know this series that we're doing. We're looking at uh, trying to find a rest in the world that doesn't really know how to rest. And we call the series Soulful Rest. And what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do for me personally in this series as well, is learn to sit in the feet of Jesus and to rest my body and my, and my mind, but also my soul. And let the presence of God and His words teach me and guide me as I walk into this year. I'm tired of running into year after year. I want to walk right next to my Savior. I want to hear from Him every step of the way. And sometimes I feel like, like my little kids do sometimes, they run ahead of me. And as a parent, I'm going, hey, come back. Come back, stand, stand here. I, sometimes I feel Jesus saying that to me. I don't know, you might be the same as well, that we run a bit too fast at times and we can miss that still, that small voice. When we actually go into a year, what I find, and into whatever it is, a bit too fast, we find that, or I find that the tiredness creeps in, that I feel a little bit worn out and they get a little bit unproductive. If I stop and have a look at the way God created this universe, it's pretty obvious. For instance, a day needs night to rest. God's put rest all around us. And sometimes I can really uh, miss that. And I don't want to miss that this year. In fact, there's a quote that I read by a man called H.H. Farmer, a late uh, theologian. He says this, if you go against the grain of the universe... You only get splinters. If you go against the grain of the universe, you only get splinters. How do we avoid splinters? Well, that's what this series is all about, learning how to rest and to abide and to remain in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Guys, before we go on, I just want to ask Jay to come up here, if he can. Thanks, mate. And just pray for us that the Spirit as we close our eyes, really opens our heart to receive him uh, from him today. Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah, thanks, Lord. Just thanks that we can come here. Just spend some time in your presence, Lord God. Just uh, just want to meditate on those words and say, come to me and I will give you rest. And Lord, there's people here, you know each of their hearts, Lord. Some will know you, some won't, Lord. I just ask that you would just touch each of them. Reveal yourself to each person here today, Lord God. May we just be a living testimony that you are a God that wants to change people's hearts. That you want to bring them into relationship with you and just give them a full life, Lord God. May that just be a real reality today. I just want to right now just pray for your servant, Lee. Ask Lord God that you would just speak mighty words through him. May your Holy Spirit be upon you. And may he just now bring us what you have to teach us. In your name we pray. Amen. Man, thank you, Jay. Legend. There was a research company called Expedia Research along with Rory Morgan Research, two research companies, did a study on Australians on how well we rest and how well we actually take a bit of holidays to find some rest. And I was astounded to read this research. Uh, research. It, it, it's, it came out that Australians actually, believe it or not, find it really hard to switch off and to rest. It came out that Australians are actually taking fewer annual leave days than we ever have before. This next one I was blown away with, that Australia in general is the third worst country to actually take holidays, which really highlights to the rest of the world that perhaps we are a little bit of a workaholic in this country. Another bit of research came out that South Australians, and Paul and Solomon, I know you guys weren't a part of this, but South Australians were actually the worst state in the country to find rest, with only 19% of their people taking annual leave every year. Now you might be sitting there going, awesome, we're in Queensland, I'm stoked. Queensland came in at the second worst state in the country to actually find rest. Uh, and take some holidays. I find that hard to believe because the points at the moment are packed with people. Everybody seems to be surfing at the moment, which is great. I love people in the water. 
But it's a staggering thing that we actually don't know how to rest. There's no question that we are working harder and longer hours than we ever, ever have before. But what I love about the gospel and the presence of Jesus is that you and I, we don't have to settle for getting splinters as we walk into this year. If we walk right next to the rhythm and the heartbeat of Jesus, we will avoid the splinters that the world wants to throw at us. You see, the world will have to say, work harder, work longer, overtake that person, get that promotion. It doesn't matter about that person. As long as you've got money in the account, you will find success. And when you find success, you're going to get happy. The world says that. The problem is that often that produces splinters and people are unhappy because they're not rested and they can't rest. John Mark Comer, a pastor over the States in Portland, he says this. He says, most followers of Jesus, at least in this modern Western world, no longer practice this thing called the Sabbath. This means many of us are missing out on one of the most life-giving practices of the way of Jesus and arguably one of the most important for our cultural movement. You see, when we rest, we start to get a little bit organized. I know I do. When I find some rest, I get organized. And when I put the Sabbath in place, we're going to look at that in a moment, actually spending prolonged periods of time trying to rest in the presence of Jesus, things start to become clear. My disorganized heart and state actually becomes somewhat organized. John, uh, John Orberg says this, that business, business isn't just a disordered schedule, it's actually a disordered heart. The business isn't just a disordered schedule, it's in fact a disordered heart. Wayne Mueller says, because of the desire to succeed, we don't rest. Because of this, the desire to run ahead of other people, try and make it, whatever that means in this world, we actually don't find rest. And because we don't find rest, we lose our way. We miss the compass points that show us where uh, to go, we bypass the nourishment that will give us support. We miss the quiet that will give us wisdom. We miss the joy and love born of effortless delight. Poisoned by this hypnotic belief that all things come through an unceasing determination and tireless effort, friends, it says we never truly rest. And for want of rest, it says our lives, our lives are in danger. I love that our God is for us. And I love that our God has the best for us. And friends, this year, I don't, and my prayer for big sign is that you don't miss out on what that best is. And what I'm finding over the last couple of months, that to find that best, whatever that best is that God has for you, I actually have to rest in Him and have Him restore the things in me that are a little bit tired, that are a little bit tapped out of listening to God. God actually knew from the very beginning of time, He created the world, and we can see there's a whole lot of things where there's rest in our world. But he actually knew from the very beginning that we also need to find rest. If you have the scriptures in front of you, whether it be on phone, tablet, or hard copy Bible, flick it open. It's the second book in the Old Testament. It's at the beginning of the Bible. It's called Exodus. We're going to land in Exodus 20 for the next couple of minutes. We see here that if you are... If you know anything of God, you would have heard it's been in multiple movies, the Ten Commandments. God laid down some things, some rules perhaps, that he knew would actually help us. And the fourth commandment in the book of Exodus, in chapter 20, verse 8, is about resting in God. It says this, you don't have it, you can follow along. It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. I just want to pause for one moment. This is the only commandment. 
that God writes, that's actually written down in, the, in, in His Word, that says, remember the Sabbath. The other ones were like, you know, just don't do these things. But this one's remember. Nearly as if He went, you know what, I think the amazing creation called human beings just might forget from time to time to rest. So I'm going to write the word remember so we can stop and actually go, oh, that's right, He actually planned this for you and for me. So remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, and on the seventh day is the Sabbath to your Lord God. On it you shall do, uh, you should not do any work. Neither you nor your sons or daughters, uh, nor male or female servants, nor animals, nor any foreigner residing in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and snapper and everything else that's in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Incredible. We talked about that last week. How God made this amazing earth in six days. And he rested on the seventh. Didn't go on vacation or holidays, but he rested. And he admired it. He delighted and he enjoyed it. Just simply rested. This instruction given to us is pretty simple if we break it down. It says this. And I've highlighted it in yellow. It says... That you and I, on the seventh day, when we find that Sabbath day of rest, we just don't work. He says don't work, but he goes further. He says not even your sons and daughters work. Saying for me as a father, teach your children how to rest. Don't have them work, just have them rest and enjoy the childlike faith that they carry and enjoy them exploring the wonder of our God. But he goes even further and he says, not even your male and female servants, for you and I. That if, if, if you've got employees, hey, have them rest. Tell them they need to find that regular rest and restoration in God. And then he goes even further and says, if you have animals, even tell them to rest. We have a cat at home. He rests seven days a week. He never works. He understands this far too well. He says, maybe let the earth rest. The animals need a break. The earth needs a break. So why don't we every seven days just stop everything and have it rest? Interesting, the images come out out of COVID at the start when everything shut down. You would have seen images perhaps of China and other places where uh, big industrial places where the smoke and the haze is always there and how clear the world looks for those couple of months when it just took some time off to rest. My cat might find this very easy to do, but I certainly don't find it easy to do, friends. In fact, I still need reminding, the Spirit of God in me reminds me in Ellsmore, how about you rest? You haven't actually sat and just rested for a long period of time. I'm still getting it right, friends. Some weeks I do better than others. But I know that God sees I'm trying to find rest in Him. To have a Sabbath day, a whole day entirely devoted to God. Remember last week we said this Sabbath is this simple word of just stopping and resting. The Hebrew is this word Shabbat. Remember we said that, which means stop, literally stop and rest. Can also be interpreted as delight in God. Just stop and rest. Dan uh, Alanda says the Sabbath is an invitation to enter delight. I love that first line. It's not a rule. It's an invitation by God to enter into his delight. The Sabbath, when experienced what God intended, is the best day of the week. It's the best day of our lives. Without question, our thought, it's the best day of our week. It is the day we anticipate on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and the day we remember on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The Sabbath is this holy time where we feast and play and dance and sing and pray and laugh, tell stories, read, paint, walk, watch creation in all its fullness. Few people are willing to enter the Sabbath and sanctify it, to set it apart, to make it whole. Because a full day of delight and joy is more than most people can bear in a lifetime, let alone in a week. 
When we enter into this Sabbath, it's a beautiful place. It's a place where we stop and pause and rest in Him. To walk into this Sabbath, like anything, we need a plan. We need to figure out how are we going to do it. And so I've got three R's, and I think it's on that sheet, if you have that sheet in front of you, three R's that hopefully are going to help us set up a time that we can find rest and restoration in our amazing Heavenly Father. I think of it like this, when I go on a trip, a holiday, uh, we do a lot of planning. We actually probably start months in advance. We book, my wife is an absolute keen being for lists. She has lists for lists and then lists of other things. That I'm, the, I'm the exact opposite, I'm sorry. You married an opposite there. I don't do lists, but my wife's a fantastic planner. We plan the holiday, we plan uh, the trip, the tickets, the accommodation. We uh, get the suitcases, the, the luggage, the clothes to, to wear. Um, we we, we uh, make sure the neighbour knows we're going away. Who's going to take our bins out to make sure that's looked after? Who's going to look after our restful cat to make sure it's still rested when we come back? Uh, there's so many things that we plan. So we go on a holiday and we just enjoy it because all of that stuff's looked after. Same applies for a Sabbath. It's so good to stop and think, well, how does that look for me? We're all different. We all enjoy different things. We follow the same God who just wants the same thing, which is our attention, which is our hearts. So when we go uh, into uh, the Sabbath, a couple of, just like a bit of a practical part of, of today, it's the, it's the ready part of the Sabbath, ready yourself for the Sabbath. For me, when the Sabbath comes around every week and down, I'm trying, like I said, I'm, I'm putting it more as a practice, I make sure all my emails on my phone and all my uh, messages uh, are, are caught up. If there's any phone calls I need to make, I try to make them before the Sabbath so my phone can actually have a break. And what I do when uh, I do the Sabbath and I put this thing away, I'm telling the phone that I'm no longer a slave to it, that the phone can have a rest. I don't need it for a long period of time because I've caught up on everything. It's just me and God now. Nothing can distract me. When I get ready... Uh, for the Sabbath, when we get ready, Shell and I, it's a good, we, we try to do sometimes a bit of a shop beforehand, so we don't have to go to the shops on the Sabbath, we don't have to, you know, line up and do all the things you do in the shops. Maybe if you uh, 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 want to have a clean house on the Sabbath, clean that house before the Sabbath, don't do it on the Sabbath, God doesn't care if you do it on the Sabbath, but doing that is work, it's, it's just that, I mean, you might love cleaning houses, you might just enjoy getting the vacuum out. Then go for it. If that gives you rest, clean that house. But for me, I just want to enjoy a clean house for about three minutes with our kids on the Sabbath. Before it turns into a vlog again, which is great, because kids love to make mess, and so do I. Another thing to do to get this day ready is, is to maybe think about a meal that you don't have to cook on the Sabbath. You can just simply get it prepared so the Sabbath comes around, you've got that meal made, you can just pull it out and warm it up and enjoy that beautiful meal without having to work. I do enjoy cooking. I actually find it relaxing. I know Jay does it, probably a lot of few people do as well. So I don't mind making something of it because I actually find it really enjoyable. Um, but pre-make a meal, it makes it so much easier on the day. Maybe on the Sabbath, plant something special that represents the Sabbath like this. Light a candle somewhere. Light a candle. For me, I look at that and I go, Jesus is actually the light of the world. And I'll walk past that. As long as it doesn't burn my house down, I'm happy. And I get to see this candle burn. And it's a reminder to me that this is a Sabbath day. It's a day that's set apart that God calls it a holy day. Then you think about what does the Sabbath day uh, look like? Where do I take the Sabbath day? Reserve a day for the Sabbath. What does that actually look like? Is it a day off that you could use as a Sabbath day? Well, for me, when I have a day off, man, I am running around. I'm mowing things. I love a straight edge on my lawn. I might get the edge around. <laughs> for a couple of get nods. That's good. I'm cleaning, mowing, maybe gutters, cleaning the pool. I'm doing anything but resting in God on that day. Even though I'm walking in Him and we're enjoying each other's presence, I'm actually not resting for a long period of time. Uh, a day that you might want to take for a Sabbath could be a Sunday where you come here with your family. 
And you might have a whole day just to enjoy that delight of God. Where you don't have to make or clean or pick up or do anything. Just enjoy that presence, that beautiful presence of God. Might be a Sunday through. If you work on weekends, you might choose a weekday to do a Sabbath. Michelle and I, we try to. Uh, we try to take a Thursday night to a Friday night, a Sabbath time. Where it's that whole time where we try our very best uh, just to sit and enjoy the presence of God. Occasionally, I check my phone and I go, ouch, I can't believe I just did that again. We try to do it on a Thursday to a Friday. Last one is this. What's the routine for the Sabbath? Meaning, what do you do on the Sabbath? Because some people say there's a lot of rules, isn't there? There's a lot of things I can and can't do. The two questions, the two questions that I ask myself for a Sabbath is this. What brings me great joy that I can do for 24 hours? Not 24 minutes, the whole entire day. What do I love to do? Because remember, the Sabbath is to delight in God. But I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm thanking God. I'm appreciative of God. I'm praying. We're connected. First one is, what do you love to do that brings you great joy for 24 hours? And the second one is this. Is it rest and worship? Is it rest and worship? And if it ticks those boxes, enjoy that. Enjoy that time with Jesus. For me, it looks like going down to the beach with my children. Uh, making drip castles on the sand, digging those, those cool tunnels that go under the sand and then come out the other side, you know, those ones that keep going and going. Doing that sort of thing with my children. I love uh, taking my children for a surf and pushing them in. Maybe one of my children will surf. So push them in. See them stand up and the absolute stoke they get when they can go all the way in. Uh, for me, I like to go uh, and surf myself, enjoy those waves. I'm going to be careful I don't surf uh, too much that I'm absolutely wasted for the rest of the day, that I'm tired, because that's not the point of the Sabbath. It's to rest and enjoy the delight of God. For me, it's, it's eating on the Sabbath a, a beautiful soup. I don't care if it's healthy or unhealthy, just a tasty meal. Enjoy it with a drop of bread, and if we can have friends over, that's even better. Sharing a meal with friends on the Sabbath is, is a beautiful thing. God loves that, into that, that, into that, that whole hospitality, enjoying one another's presence. It's enjoying good food on the Sabbath. It's sitting in the Word of God and letting those black and white, sometimes red, if you have the words of Jesus in the Bible, in red, sometimes those red words, letting them jump off that page and land into your heart. And they just sit there and they work their beautiful thing inside. I love to sit and just enjoy the Word of God. I love to get a guitar or play music and just worship God right around the house, jump on the key. I don't care what it is, just, just play worship music and enjoy that. Enjoy those beautiful words that we get to lift up our Heavenly Father. And like I said, I enjoy turning my phone off to do not disturb because I don't want to be a slave to it. But in all of these things, guys, in all of these things that we do, it's set apart, it's made holy. The Sabbath, the Sabbath is about worshipping our Heavenly Father. It's a holy day. It's a pure day to vote to Jesus, delighting in His presence, remembering Him. Here's the thing, Big Side. We all go through different stages of life. Sometimes a stage of life uh, is, is, is uh, demanding with work. Sometimes with young children, you're thinking, when am I going to get a break? How am I going to, Elsmore, you're dreaming, thinking I'm going to get 24 hours off. You know, just because I've got children, I've got young kids. God knows that. God understands that and he gets that you're trying to find rest in him. It's, it's not putting rest at the end of the to-do list. It's putting it at the start of the to-do list. And try to figure out that, that rhythm that works for you and for your family. Remember the Sabbath is all about rest and restoration, both physically and also spiritually.
I'm going to end uh, this uh, end with this quote, and then I'm going to pray. But there's a couple of questions I'm going to put out to us to think about in a couple of months, but also for the rest of this week. I'm going to ask Marcus and the guys to come up while we wrap up. This is John Mark again. He says this, like all good things, it takes practice. He's talking about the Sabbath. It takes practice. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with this practice and with God. Let yourself settle into the rest for your soul that Jesus has on offer. Heavenly Father, I pray as we walk into your year, your time, your day, and this week, Jesus, I pray that the Spirit teaches us what it means to stop and rest. Well, I pray your Spirit identifies things in our life that, that maybe we're trying to uh, keep up with the world, that we can maybe let go of. We can find rest in you. Jesus, I pray in those times of rest, we discover, perhaps rediscover, something new and beautiful about you, about who you are. Lord, it says in John 10, I pray that your spirit continues to fill us up unto the full, until we are overflowing in you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So two questions. I'm going to get Marcus and Lee to sing for us for a minute. And we just want to, I just want you to rest. Enjoy these words, but maybe let the Spirit start speaking about what the Sabbath, what this time of rest looks like for you. There's two questions of this. You can't read that, sorry. It says, what can you do to make the Sabbath special for you and your family? The second question is, what needs changing in your life for Sabbath to become a part of your practice? Sit in that for a moment while these guys are ministering to us. Thanks, guys.